are going to do our cool willow, green willow uh, cobweb broom with the pumpkin tips and tails. So you can see the tips of it are dyed and also the tails of it are dyed. And then um, I want to talk to you real briefly about what I did to uh, uh, how I got the green stick. So here's the stick we're going to be using today so I can show you how to tie one on. This is Curly Willow. So what I did is I uh, took the curly willow, harvested it in the spring, and I took the bark off. And when you take the bark off, you get this beautiful white. Uh, so um, I let it dry outside until it was completely dry. And then I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to try throwing this in some leftover broom dye and see how it takes. Well, it took fabulous. But what I found was, is this dye was not real... Uh, what do you want to call it? Sun resistant, fade fast. So what I did after I got it done is I um, put spar varnish on it, a spray spar varnish. And when I got done, I mean, it looked like it was like metallic off of a car. Really liked how it turned out. So if you have access to Curly Willow and you want to try that, that's how I got that cool green. So Willow is real light. And um, I did have to go through after it dried because there's a lot of them that I thought, oh, I can make, you know, two and three uh, broom, uh, like triple broom or a or wedding broom with them. But what I found was willow can be brittle. So after I dried it, then I went through and, and, and popped on it basically to see where the strength was. So anyways, you still get a cool looking stick. And... Um, I love getting sticks that are uh, native to the area. I'm always beachcombing for driftwood, and um, I'd rather see you know a, a different stick with character than just a pine stick. They're good to start with, but then they get boring. So okay, I've got my uh, broom corn over here uh, soaking. So I'm going to see if it's ready to go. I'm going to put this off to the side so we know what you're doing, right? That's the one with the cool tips and tails pumpkin. So next month, you'll be making a round room with the purple tips and tails. So what I want to do, starting out just real quick, you need to make sure that you have a jerk string already made. All it is is just an overhand knot with a piece of twine. And have it ready, you need something to cut with. I like an X-Acto, but you could use a knife. You can use scissors, whatever you need. You know, what's comfortable for you. You need some kind of a hammer and a broom nail. And I've already gone ahead and tapped that broom in there, and I went like two fingers up. Okay, so one thing I do want to do, because these are real different, I lay that on the floor to see how it lays flat against a surface because you're going to hang your broom up, right? And you want it to lay flat against a wall. So that's what I came up with. And then I tap that in there. And I'm always, when I'm doing any kind of hammering and or cutting, I'll flip my broom spindle up and I'll use this for tapping in or cutting things down. And we'll get there. So, all right. So you want to make sure that your thread is coming off your spindle on the top of. You need to roll off the top of it. We're just going to do an overhand knot to start. And we want a knot that's going to slip on the long piece, not the short piece. So I'm going to do a loop and where it intersects I'm going to hold it, turn that upside down, grab the long piece here. And then what I do, because you can get a long thread here and I don't like that so I'm gonna tighten that up and actually I'm gonna cut this off because I don't like this long tail it's just more you gotta hide and if you wanted to get real persnickety you could actually burn that I'm not that persnickety okay so I've got my cool green stick and my uh, 
broom nail is already in here. So you can see that I haven't tapped it down real far. The reason that you put a broom nail in is because you want to make sure that the broom corn does not slip off. So it goes on top of. Now I'm right-handed, so that means that my broom corn is going to go underneath the table or to my left because I'm right-handed. Now if you're left-handed, it's going to be exactly the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about three or four wraps here. Just to tighten this up. If I did more than I need, but I didn't want to back up the spindle. So, check out my cool pumpkin here. See if it's ready to go. So what I like to do on the first uh, piece of broom corn is I like to put that right on top of that nail. Now you don't have to do that, but then I'm guaranteed that it's not going to show up. So, uh, and I always start off with one and then I'll add in twos. And the reason that I do that is because, and when I'm putting these in, I want to put them, I don't want to put them right on the intersection of the the broom corn in the neck or the knurl, I want to go up a little bit because I don't want it to bust on me. And you see that shifted around. And now that's showing again. So I'm going to put another one on top of it. And I got to remember that I just added one. So right now I've got one, two, three, four. I need an odd amount or this isn't going to work. So. I'm going to add in twos. Now you don't have to do that. I just find it, I hate going back and counting it. And when you put these in, you don't want them in super thick because you still got to braid it, right? And that's going to be tight there too. So let me check and make sure what I got. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more in here. So, and usually, you know, depending on the diameter of your Cool green stick. I'm going to count this one more time just to make sure. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it's usually about between seven and nine. So when you start wrapping, you're going up. All right, you want it right next to each other. So we're going to go for about three goes. Or four. Okay. So then I'm going to start doing my braid. So what I want to do, broom corn goes up and down pretty good. It does not go back and forth real good. So you want to, this is the magic here, is this finger. You want to, you're going every, over, every other one, over and under, right? But you want to dip down, take that finger and pull it all the way over, and then crease. That is the secret to getting a really nice braid. So when you're doing your braid, if you're thinking, well, mine doesn't look real tight and, and more like, I always compare it with like uh, sweet corn, you know, how it looks real tight and, uh, and, and right there. If it doesn't look that way, then it's because um, you, you, uh, you're not using your finger. Okay, so. And I, I was just checking to make sure that I was on my weave, which means uh, I've got an odd amount, and I'm um, I'm gonna go uh, over and under, right? Just a plain weave. And I'm, every time I do this, I'm using that um, finger to pull that over. put something in there it's kind of witchy looking I guess all right so you can see that I am getting close here and I think I'll go around just a couple more and 
Yeah, this is about my last one, I think. See how short that is? Okay, so when I come around to that last little shorty guy again, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my jerk string. And I'm right-handed, which means the knot has to go on the right-hand side because I'm pulling it through this way. So I've got that laid down there nice, and I'm gonna wrap it around about three times. Every time I go around, make sure that stays nice and flat in there. And then I'm gonna take my X-Acto. I'm gonna hold the tension with my thumb here. Hold the X-Acto. Need a new X-Acto, probably. And then I'm going to take that string, that black one, I'm going to thread it through the loop of my jerk string. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to jerk it through. So then I want to tighten that up and I'm going to cut away from myself. All right, see how the kind of a, you got a dog leg looks like, huh? So um, this is how I like to cut these. So I can tell I need a new blade, but basically if you cut it and then pull it up, it'll pop right off there. So you put some pressure on it, kind of slice down in there. It'll either pop off because you got a nice blade, or you can oops, hold it and then pull it back and it'll come off. All right, so there's my nice cut edge there with my cool twisty stick. Well, that's looking pretty nice. Now, what I want to do is I want to tie, or I want to sew, not tie, a couple uh, rounds down here. Now, remember this is just cobweb room. What I like to do is just take a rubber band, and I have lots of pieces of reed, but you could use anything. And it's just a lark's head over that, and that just holds that in place for me for a little bit. You see, I didn't get um, real, uh, I, I don't need to shove a whole bunch of, of uh, broom corn in here because you see how tight that gets, all right? So, and this is, that was a half pound. There, you can probably make another one with it too, depending on the diameter of your stick, you know? So um, my caution to you is don't uh, think that you have to put the whole a half pound of material in the broom. Do what your uh, broomstick dictates, basically. All right, so I have some black string, I think. So on this small of a broom, I want about, oh, like two yards. And, uh, well, not even yards, really. It's just like an arm's length, depending on how long your arm is. So what I do is I take it and I loop it, all right? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers in that loop and make a lark's head. So I've got, basically I've got a hoop that's connected. So two fingers, face them down, put them together, there's your loop, all right? So what I do is I go around this. I mean, two to three times. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can sew this up. There's no right way. A lot of people do uh, brooms a whole, and it's totally different, you know. But there's no one right way to do brooms, just like there's no one right way to do baskets. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that that right there, can't see me, right there is the... Um, end of my broomstick. So I don't want to do my sewing so close that I hit that. It's, so I went around twice and I'm gonna go through that hoop that I made with the end of my uh, waxed cord here. And so I'm gonna tighten that up. Now this is one way of sewing down a cobweb broom. 
Not the only way. Just one. Okay, so what you can do is go through the whole room. Pull it tight. Go back through the whole room. And what I like to do is I want that to be close to where that knot is so that I can go over it. And I think I went over more than I normally would. So um, then what I'm going to do is I want to like hit the four corners here. So I'm going to kind of go a little uh, diagonally through there. And the same thing here. So I'm looking here. I want that to be, I'm quartering it is what I'm doing with my, with my stitching. And this might have been a little bit too thick, but it's just a broom. Okay, so then you're looking like I want to divide the space between here and do it again. I'm coming through there. And then I'm looking over here to see where that would be. And I think I want that over just a little bit more. Okay. So, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through it and cut it. So that's the first way of doing this. And then I'll just get rid of that. Okay, so... like these guys hanging up here so I'm just gonna pop them off all right so they don't come like down two fingers and I'll get me another piece of stuff to sew with I mean you don't have a real large diameter here so it doesn't take a lot of thread you could do I mean if you really wanted to you could do three, you could do four of these. You don't need to, but they kind of look cool. So this time I'm just gonna go around twice. That's what I normally do. Okay. And hitch that up. That looks a little bit better than that to me. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. This we know. All right, so I'm gonna thread my Room needle again. Now here's the other way you can do it. You kind of like go around and do stitches instead of going all the way through it. So if I was doing um, a round broom, which is what we'll be doing next month, then I would do this. It would actually be my, I've done it the other way too. But this to me just looks a little neater. With a cobweb broom, you can see that there's not a lot of time involved here. And it's not a real big broom. So um, if you want to do the through the middle, divide it basically in quarters and then divide it again from there into eights, you can do that too. This, you know, I mean, this pretty much does the same thing. It's just a little neater, I think. So I'm going to come around here, and here's my last stitch. I'm just going to go over where I began. Same thing. Bring it through. Tighten it up good and cut it off. And there you have it. Now, one thing that you probably want to do is you want this to hang up, right? So you can get rid of this now. So see the way that it lays. And then, for me now... If I want this to hang, I need to drill a hole that is um, through here, about right there, so that I can put a hanger on there to, to hang it. So, uh, you always want to hang up your brooms. Don't let them sit, because then it bends the fibers. So, here is your very cool Halloween-looking broomstick. For your first class 
of your uh, Fall Broom uh, Club membership. So here's my first one. And then look, I trimmed up the uh, trimmed up the tail a little bit on mine, and you can do that with yours too. So there you go. That's number one down. As soon as you make it, everybody and their brother will say, I want one too. So be on the lookout for cool sticks. And you know that they'll work because you can take them and whack them really hard against a tree. If they don't bust, bingo, it's a broomstick. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this month. Uh, next month will be a, a round broom, real similar to a cobweb, but it has layers. And it will uh, be with the, the purple tips and tails. And we'll alternate it with some natural, too, so you can see it jump out a little bit more. Um, I have decided to do just regular brooms that are, aren't part of the broom club. If you're interested in that, uh, keep an eye out. And we'll also have um, fun uh, stocking stuffer idea kind of brooms for December that aren't part of the club. But I just have some, um, I had some leftover willow that I made in red and it really turned out dynamic as well so until next month hope you enjoy the room and send me pictures when you get done and i'll brag about your work see you then